Hey, what's going on everybody? Shmoop here, back at it again, finally got the mic working. So I've been hearing a lot of things about people not having wish ender, and I've been told this by friends, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do a challenge. I'm gonna see if a lone guardian with a sidearm can beat this dungeon. So I'm gonna use Brood Weaver. Here's a quick look at the aspects and fragments. Here's a quick look at the, you know, mods and whatnot in the armor and the artifact mods. I'll go over this later in the video. But this is just straight up a guardian and a sidearm, that's it. So in the first area here, just I was so surprised at how much damage this little sidearm did with the threadlings and unravel. It just it just melts it. If you can land your shots, that is. I am I, I am not great at this. But anyway, yes. Bam, done, dead. So the important thing here that I want to showcase is your melee and your orbs are amazing at dealing with those snipers like it just trekked right onto him he is unable to shoot me now it's great and look at the range on this melee here like absolutely insane little flick there now when you turn around for this section it's important to note these phalanxes they are throughout this entire dungeon and they do not mess around they will boop you into anything they can slam you into a wall and kill you but once you get through them, just Unravel takes care of everything for you. It was amazing with the sidearm, just it's gone, over, done, everything dies. Maybe you have to throw a grenade here and there, or, you know, throw an ore, but for the most part, they take care of everything for you. Look at that, dead. Now, the only annoying boss in the first area is the captain. Those little darkness blasts he shoots out, he teleports and rushes you, it's kind of annoying. But again, this sidearm can track around corners, it makes threadlings with the artifact, it just, it eats him. He's gone, dead, and ready. Look at that. Bam, that easy. It's really easy to be able to solo this dungeon, it's really easy to be able to flawless this dungeon, so... You can use just a single weapon and get through this with your subclass. You can definitely do it with a full loadout. So there, anybody can do this. Anybody can get Wish Ender. It's great. It's easy. I'm going to let some gameplay go. Here's the next section. It is important to note the snipers and the invisible minotaurs here. They will ruin your whole time. There are three of the minotaurs as far as I can count. And there is at least four to five snipers. I killed some before I started counting. And there is a phalanx up around the corner when you get to the top level of the stairs. Note him, he will boop you off the map. It is ridiculous. Look at the range on that melee, by the way. Like, you can cross map with this thing and just take out red bars like snipers. It's great. Here is where the phalanx is. You're not going to see him, but you're going to see the threadling skeleton. That they are great for that. Whatever you have to do, kill him. He will shoot you off the map and you will die. You can go directly up in the corner here and there's one of the minotaurs. You can suspend him easy cleanup on him. There sometimes is a vandal right here sniping you, and there's usually one across and one way up above you. See, there's the one up above. That one, easy melee kill. So you can either choose to go over and take care of the minotaurs and the vandal like I did on the other side, or just go straight for the captain, but be careful. But once the captain dies, all the enemies in this area will kind of despawn after a bit of time. Sometimes the Minotaur does, sometimes he doesn't. Just keep your eye out for him, but the Vandals more than 9 out of 10 times will. This is the most feared area in this whole dungeon for this build. I have a sidearm, so I have to sit here and wait for my melee to recharge to get all of these snipers. This is nothing but snipers, phalanxes, and knights. It is... This is the worst part. This is one of two areas that I'm going to say are going to make or break a person, depending on what kind of loadout you're doing. Because if you rush straight out there, you're going to get clapped by at least 10 of these snipers and you're going to die. No ifs, ands, buts about it. I tried using threadlings here. They kind of track onto the knights, but it's, it's not great. So just sit back and pick them off. If you had a scout or a bow or a sniper, this would be so much easier. But again, only a little baby sidearm. So, yeah, this this was fun. This was great. Didn't take forever, I'll tell you that much. Alright, so now that we got through here, we're getting to the first area that's kind of a jumping puzzle. You can skip almost every single one of these ogres. Just make sure before you start this, you have your super full, because there is one ogre you need to kill 
and it is while you are on a ledge. Just immediately go out, turn left, you can start jumping on these platforms, and if you go quick enough, none of the ogres are going to even see you or bother you. This little corner jump is kind of tricky just because if you go too close, you can get booped by the orb there, and obviously you're just dead. So if you're going for flawless, it's game over. Like, here you see me barely make it. After this pillar here, on the next section straight across, is the ogre that you should super. He he can quickly send you flying off the map, and I've wiped twice on a flawless run because of it, but just super him down, quick and easy cleanup. Good to go, don't have to worry about him. If you look there, he was getting ready to start blasting me with his ogre eye. So, now we're getting on to the first throw away. I'm gonna let this play out just so you can kind of like see the path. I, I don't know if anybody needs to see that or not, but I've heard people say that they can't find a group and they still need to get Wish Ender. So I'm just gonna let this play because reasons, I guess. It's pretty simple though, especially with this build. This is like one of the areas where it is extremely strong because the unraveling rounds just, they kill everything. And because they keep spawning, they never stop getting unraveled. And if they do, you have four ways to generate that, five including your super. So it's not really the worst. I would recommend going through here that you have like something to heal with. Like, even if it's just a mod on your armor that when you pick up an orb, you get health back or it starts health regeneration, that would be great. Rifts are amazing. Overshields, just even if you have to switch to Crimson, I mean, honestly, you could do it. It just, that's the one part. You don't regenerate health, so that's not great. I was a little worried going through here. I underestimated how powerful Unraveling was. Took care of everything. Like, this whole run through has shown me how absolutely busted warlocks with unraveling and threadlings are especially there's not much that can stand up to it curious about thinking you know i should go into another dungeon with this and <laughs> see what happens there but anyway so you get through there's no clear path you just jump down from here there may be a few thrall that spawn down here because it is technically still in that area but once you get to the doorway they'll stop spawning for the most part and you just have to kill the few that are down there with you see there you go despawned and then from there you have another little jumping quote-unquote area with some phalanxes the biggest part to know about this is the i'm gonna call them the shadow boobers that are on the wall where you want to jump they can instantly ruin your run and if you're trying to go flawless just be careful like sit back watch them go off and then from there go see here i almost fell off because i was being careless don't do that don't don't follow that now down in one of these doorways there is also a phalanx he won't really mess with you unless you fall down and then you're basically insta dead because he's gonna boop you right off but like here's the worst one you see that one right there that dark spot that is the one that caught me off guard the most because as you round the corner you can't see it so be very careful right there and then just keep going, keep doing your thing. And there's the phalanx. Knew he was down here somewhere. I think there's only one too, right? Yeah. I know there's more in there. There's like two more in there. But if you stay out here, you don't have to worry about them. Wait for the, uh, the boopers, obviously. That one was a close one there. That was like literally seconds from getting thrown off. And then here, this is an army of them. I don't know why this area chose to have 20 phalanx. Don't love it. But just keep your range. They can't really do much to you. They have little tiny cannons. I do get one spawn on me right there. And he he could have caused problems. But thank god I was above him and he just booped me up. Because that... I don't, I don't know why he spawned on me. That was great game design right there. <laughs> so here is probably the worst area in the dungeon for anyone if you're solo. This boss is an ogre. He can pin you against a wall and just delete you. There are sniping vandals everywhere that can just delete you if you're careless, which you will see me almost get destroyed multiple times, and then you have to deal with wizards. Thank god you unravel one or two of them and they will go down. I'm going to leave this up so you can see kind of like the route I took. It's not the safest by any means, but it works for me. You just always want to be hiding from the boss. If you have a choice of hiding from a vandal or the boss, 
I'd say hide from the boss because the boss will literally just push you wherever he hits you. See, you can see the little stun locks. It's it's terrible. And the thing to keep in mind is once you kill a wizard and pick up that orb, which there's only so long the orb will sit floating in midair, which you'll see here in a second. This hand cannon, or this sidearm has terrible recoil, by the way. But it will sit there for so long. If you don't pick it up, it will despawn and the wizard will come back. But once you pick it up, you're going to have this little debuff timer, which you can see me struggling to get it here because it was in the air and almost die. Like I said, this is the worst part in the whole dungeon, worse than the final boss. But you will see the timer petitioner's mark. When that hits zero, you wipe. So with unraveling, it's pretty easy to take care of. I know this season Polaris Lance and Tommy's matchbook are absolutely insane for destroying things. And there's probably quite a few more. I mean, it's not the toughest dungeon, but it's still challenging in these areas. Enough so that you should have a general idea of what you're doing when you get in there and how to handle it. You'll see multiple times, like there, if he hits me one more time, I am literally dead. So I'm gonna suspend him, which you can do even though he's still immune. Those you know, hobgoblins are terrible, by the way. Like they, I don't know why they just immune everything. That's such a great ability. But yeah, so going through, I'm just leaving this up so you can kind of see the route. I almost ran out of time there when it starts turning red. That's when you need to panic. And you can see the range on these guys. It is ridiculous. But Threadlings and Unraveling make this really fun, actually, because it's like they will wipe everything, but you don't have a whole lot of survivability. So it's kind of a yin and a yang. I don't do woven mail because you lose the base resilience and I just I'd rather get orbs from suspending kills. I always like the hype. Now, the timer went up to just petitioner's burden at times four. Here's where you start doing your damage. Try your best to get him to half health. If you can go past that, that's great. But try your best to get him to half health, which you'll see me do with the sidearm, which does also surprisingly decent damage for what it is. But the point in that is two phasing is good. When you go beyond that, you increase the likelihood of messing up and just straight up dying to stupidity or player error. So go through, do it again, and just burn him down on the second time. Make sure you take care of the little orbs because they do decent damage, and then just keep going. The jumping puzzle, there's nothing really special here. I don't know how much I'm going to leave in. It's pretty pretty easy except for the little taken captains that teleport and do the darkness blast but they're nothing there is another throwaway here and i'm gonna leave this all in because there is a little corner you have to turn so you don't jump off the edge you just unravel everything it was it was really fun just watching green fly absolutely everywhere i i kind of feel like this might mess with some people's games if they're still on like last gen because there is a lot going on here and it's mostly behind you too like if you keep pushing forward it's behind you now there you have to turn right and go down here the biggest problem is these guys are going to keep spawning because of where you are but if you push forward the phalanxes are going to boop you right off so unraveling is great because it's taking care of them back there like around the corner, you see my crosshair going off while I'm taking care of these guys. But if you have to choose, take care of the phalanx directly in front of you first and then jump forward so the thrall can't get you because they'll keep overwhelming you. But if you jump into the phalanx to get away from them, they will obviously boop you right off the map. So phalanx is priority. Other than that, it's not too bad. You go around the corner and you have another little darkness blast area with a couple snipers. Again, same as before, wait for them to go off. There is a pattern, they are on a timer, and they go at specific times. Just go slow. The whole point of this dungeon is just go slow, take your time. Nothing here is rushing you, thank God, because if it was, you'd probably have a terrible time like I did when I tried to rush through it on the third time. This took me <laughs> a few times. Not the greatest by any means, but hey, I'm here trying to help you all out. Alright, so yeah, the only problem with these orbs is occasionally the Threadlings will fall off the map. But thank god one got him there, because otherwise you would need a melee to get him on this. It was <laughs> it was kind of brutal doing this with only a sidearm in some areas, because the range is not there. Thank god Broodweaver has a very long range melee and multiple of them. Otherwise, I don't know if I could have done this. 
but again for anybody else you can do this with just straight up you know scout sniper or anything like that a bow even the new bow would probably be great in here but i highly suggest y'all trying this out because it is a lot of fun going through here with just one weapon it's a fun little challenge you know that's that's what you gotta do when there's not a lot going on give yourself some challenges to accomplish all right so this is the end of it and now we just go straight up to the boss now there is kind of a cheese area that i don't normally like abusing but given the fact that i have a sidearm 100 percent going to abuse it you can jump on the statue's head and the one on the left she can't actually see and then from up there, beam down the Scions first because they'll run directly underneath you and they will wreak havoc. I always try and go for the Threadlings. And, you know, every subclass has a way of dealing with mobs. I mean, if they're just trash mobs, they're Scions, but they can overwhelm you below, as you saw. And then from there, just keep whittling down the knights. You might have to jump down to get to them. The boss isn't too crazy. She's a wizard, but it's like... You can kind of dodge and weave back and forth between the fire and there are some hiding spots. You can also jump all the way around the outside, but you need to do like perfect jumps to make it around. It is not the easiest. So when their immune shields go up, just hit them with the crystal, which took forever with the sidearm. It's like three mags. It's not, it's not great, but it gets the job done, I guess, but I would, it's not great. Okay. It just... If you're doing this, don't use a sidearm to destroy the crystal. It took forever. So the knights are pretty slow. The scions are going to spawn back after you do that. The big part about this is once their head comes off, they will become very aggressive and rush you. So it is a good idea to kind of hide. Now, if you see here, they were in each other's way and actually prevented them from killing me right there. Because if they wouldn't have gotten in each other's way, they would have double slammed me and I would have been dead. That is the luckiest thing I think that has ever happened in this game. So just let the unraveling do its work. That was great, easy fun. And now it's time to do the boss. When you have times three, you do a ridiculous amount of damage to this boss. And even with that, with the sidearm, it was uh, not doing that great, but it was getting the job done. I barely squeezed out the kill here. I think with like, what, maybe 10 seconds left. But that's pretty much it for the run. It was a fun little challenge. I highly suggest trying it. And I'm going to put up the build here at the end just so y'all can see like more in depth i guess would be the word for it but yeah flawless with only a sidearm fun little challenge and i highly recommend anybody give it a try it was it was worth it all right y'all peace